before we get to physics or consciousness or evolution, I'd like to begin, begin with something quite topical for me since I just used ChatGPT for the first time last week to create an image of Sean, actually, as you guys know, in a, a mortal battle with a recycling bin, though I see he's recovered from the ordeal. But Dan, you wrote us that you think large language models are, and I'll, I'll quote you actually, the most dangerous technology ever developed, capable of leading to the collapse, not just of democracy, but of civilization. And my experience with ChatGPT is that it's the single most amazing technology I've encountered, but not the most dangerous. So I was wondering just why you put it that way. Large language models permit us to make counterfeit people. We've never had to deal with counterfeit people like this before. Uh, we evolved to use the intentional stance to treat anything that talks to us as another human agent, and to deal with it, we, we're used to the fact that there are uh, cheats and con men and so forth out there, but but this is different. Uh, this technology can flood the world, flood the world with manipulative fake people, and we're ill-equipped to deal with it. Because we are unable to turn off the intentional stance when we encounter such a phenomenon. And who controls your attention controls you. And I think that we are in danger of losing our free will, being turned into puppets by a sorcerer's apprentice army of fake people like the brooms and the sorcerer's apprentice, and that human trust will be jeopardized, and civilization depends on human trust. Dan, I, I appreciate the concern about counterfeit people, and I agree with your um, essay in Atlantic suggesting that there should be laws against counterfeit people. But I'm wondering if the end of civilization might be a, a bit hyperbolic, because uh, when there are new threats, there are new technologies, there are also countermeasures. And there's a reason to believe that we humans, as we evolved language, also uh, evolved a, um, a kind of a, a built-in um, suspicion of whether what we are hearing is credible or not. Hugo Mercier wrote a, an entire book called non, "Not Born Yesterday" about the um, skeptical yeah, yeah. measures he th believes are built into human nature as a necessary pre as necessary accompaniment to language having evolved in the first place. And so, if we are uh, as soon as we become aware that there are counterfeit people, we'll be suspicious that the people we're dealing with might be counterfeit. We'll look for more credible, vetted sources. Uh, the uh, some evidence that 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 is already starting to happen is that despite predictions about six or seven years ago that the news media would be permanently polluted by deep fakes once that technology became available, a recent article assessing the the deep fake scare, so they've had virtually no influence on politics. People just um, are, are uh, alert to the possibility of deep fakes. They don't believe them. The news, the reputable news agencies don't report them. The fake news sites uh, already cater to the most fanatical of the fanatical, so it doesn't really matter. They already... they tell them what they wanted to believe in the first place. But the whole news ecosystem has not been polluted by deep fakes, even though they've been available, widely available for six or seven years because of these countermeasures. So with countermeasures for other kinds of counterfeit people, can't we avert the collapse of civilization? Yes, we can. Uh, uh, and I've been advocating for those countermeasures all along. But one, one particular avenue that I don't uh, think is very uh, attractive is that we all learn 
how to unmask counterfeit people. Because I don't know about you, but I don't want every time I talk to a friend on the phone or on a on a situation like this, I don't want them pestering me with gotcha questions and and tricky tricky paranoid issues to make sure that I'm real. I just want I just any more than I want to look at every twenty dollar bill I get to examine it closely to see if it's fake. I want to trust the technology to take care of that. I think technology can take care of it, but only if we act quickly and vigorously and intelligently. And if you look at Congress today, quick, effective, intelligent is, are not the terms that come to mind. I think let me come in right in the middle here because I think that I agree with both of you guys. Uh, the danger is real. You know, Robinson right now could have saved himself some effort by conjuring up fake AI versions of me and Dan and Steve and made a little podcast. You know, the technology is already good enough to do that. In fact, let me right now put in the mind of the uh, listeners and watchers, are you sure? That we are the real Dan Dennett, Steve Pinker, Sean Carroll, Robinson Earhart. I mean, how would you know? <laughs> <laughs>